really active on your social media, especially your Instagram. And it's really impressive how you, I mean, how you worked your Instagram and how you engage with your followers and fans. So how are you able to be so active on all your social media? Well, you know, um, I don't know. It's a determination too. Determination, and 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 I love what I do, and you know, I, I don't want to stop doing what I do. And so, whenever or however the opportunity comes to do something, say something, I'm right there to jump at the at the at the opportunity. And because I have uh, fans and friends and things like that, you know, we tap into those fans and friends, and you know, hey, let's talk. That's why talk with a friend work. That's why a Sunday with Brent and Ferran works too as well. You know what I mean? Um, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a feeding for us all, I think. You know? And so, like I was saying earlier on, you know, it, 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 it is tiresome and it's hard work. And right. it's, just a, it's just a trouble here. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it, it's really hard work, but, but the redress is good. You know, the, the, oh, yeah. the comeback is is good. So you, 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 what you put in is what you get. You know, that's cool that you're very determined. I mean, obviously, I, I found out that you're you've been determined in your musical career at a, such an early age that I've heard that you actually made your first guitar when you were a <laughs> child, I guess, to try to convince your dad that you were trying to convince him to get you a guitar and w in which you made it one yourself. So why were you so determined to playing music at such an early age? Well, you know, I kind of love music from 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 as far back as I can remember. So, you know, but it all really digging deep when I saw the skatterlights in Kingston at the stadium. Uh, for the, I was nine years old, you know, when I saw them. Uh, all the elementary schools in Jamaica met, you know, at, at the uh, at the stadium in Kingston for a big big function, you know, and the skatterlights were playing. First time I, 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 I see a band play, you know, and it's like, whoa, <laughs> this is this is cool. And they were dancing, doing shadow boxing, you know what I mean, and, and, and playing music and everybody having so much fun. And the whole audience in front of them were having so much fun. I was way up in the back, but I'm just observing the whole thing and saying oh, to myself, that is what I'm going to do. Oh, wow. I am going to do that. And I never gave up that dream. So how'd you make the guitar? <laughs> I dig it out of a, out of a, 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 dig the body and the neck out of a seed, a trunk, you know, like something that's easy to work with, uh -huh. you know, uh, right. And then I get a piece of solitex uh, for, for the top. Uh, I, I use a uh, uh, six inches nail. For, I had was to make my own tools too. So I use a six inches nail, you know, flatten it, the, the, oh, the point wow. of it sharpen it and use that for chisel. I use broken glass to shave the wood down after oh, I wow. shape out shape out the thing with my with my machete and the knife and you know what I mean? Some things I would break wire. I would break wires and then sharpen the point so I have a little bend to get into little corners I wanna go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, yeah, right. You know, and then I end up playing the same guitar in, in, in church once. And there was a guy there that had a guitar, you know, and he and my dad talked and, and he told my dad that he's selling the guitar. So my dad checked me and said that we should go check him. And we checked him, we checked him and he was selling the guitar for 13 pounds. Um, so I work with my dad. He gave me nine pounds, and he, then he another two pounds, make it eleven, saying that hey, you know, okay, take this to the guy, you know, and you but you got to find the other two pounds to give him. Oh, yeah. You know, at the time I didn't have any money, so I still hold the guy two pounds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> One person that you have featured on this History Say album is your daughter, who I've heard you mention before that you've been actually wanting to have her featured on your music for a long time now. So, and you've yeah, had yeah. a few albums out before the History Say album now. So, why'd you wait until this album to finally have your daughter featured on? Well, you know, um, 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 I, it was just the right time. 
it was just the right time she had her life you know we had uh, and, and her family to take care of and we are far apart you know and then that distance and thing and and then it, it happened that you know she she visit for kind of for the first time you know and it's like take the opportunity to use that ad, ad, ad opportunity to do something with her you know and then end up touring together too you know uh, one one and one made two you know what i mean yeah <laughs> we, we don't know what will happen in the future but you know kind of never know you know you just kind of plant the seed and and, and watch it grow Oh yeah, maybe you all can have an album out together or something. That would be cool. Who knows? Who oh, knows? Yeah. That would be cool. You're right. <laughs> are there any musicians out there that are no longer living that you wish you could have featured on your songs? You know, <laughs> this is a big dream, but Ray Charles is one of them. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ray Charles, well, Ray Charles hit the beat, you know, just, just a soul. This is a raw soul there. You know, something like Mayelia Jackson. I don't know if you know of Mayelia Jackson, who, 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 she was a gospel singer. Okay. But, but it's the same kind of hit, you know, it's is from a long time ago. You know, I was a kid then when she, when, when she was popular, you know, uh, and, and, and still doing it, you know. Uh, 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 she was one, you know. If if I could turn back the hand, the, the, the hands of time, you know what I mean. I'd say, yeah. and can I afford it and do it, you know. Yeah, she, she would be one, you know. <laughs> Just for the God, man, it's there's a yes, there's a heartfelt, you know, uh, uh, um, you know. Uh, well, again, uh, Dan Drummond uh, uh, from Jamaica, there, uh-huh. you, know, uh, you know, Slim Smith, you know, singer. You know, used to be in the techniques. You know, uh, uh, yeah. You know, there are there are there are there are few there are few, there, there are quite a few there if I, if, I, if my memory would come quick enough. <laughs> One artist that's really big on dub music, a legend, is Lee Scratch Perry, which I've heard you in a previous interview say he's given you some helpful advice. So, do you mind sharing what that was? Yeah, you know, when when I did a song for him, uh, I think it was Untrue Girl. I did Untrue Girl for him. Um, and when 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 I was voicing it, you know, he turned all the light, turned on all the lights in the studio. So the studio was highly bright, you know, he said, mm-hmm. Scratch, turn off some of the light, man. No, man, get used to it. <laughs> So that one was one good advice, you know, because <laughs> after I started to tour and do gigs, something like that, you know, oh, yeah. that the light, the light that he shines in the studio was oh, yeah. minimal, was minimal <laughs> to what on stage, you know what I mean? So, oh. uh-huh, I see what he was talking about. <laughs> but, you know, he saw that I was, I was, uh, you know, like shy and thing like that. And, you know, don't want to take the forefront. So, you know, uh, uh, he was kind of trying to bring me out of my shell, you know. And also, you know, uh, because like I said, I spent, I spent like about six months uh, uh, over there, like uh, straight, almost every day, you know, playing for different artists. That's bass, you know, playing for different artists and with different musicians. I, so I got a lot of uh, experience there by playing with different musicians and, and, and for playing for different artists, you know different tastes and when it comes to percussions you know sometimes when everyone is gone and scratch and i left around here uh, 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 and he would put a rhythm on and say hey bessie come help me put something on here you know and he would be playing something and i'm playing something you know and sometimes somebody else would be in the studio sometimes it's his son you know uh uh uh, uh. i can't remember if my wife at the time purring pauline if, if she did some of that too. I can't remember. But we were in the studio, he was, you know, once it called for it, you know, mm-hmm. we would all have a piece of percussion and we have a part that we play, you know. And sometimes it's a pang, you just just pang and you wait till your time come round again. Pam. <laughs> Pam, you know. But, and the next person, 
Pong tick tock, ticky tick tock, pong tick tock, tick 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 tock, tick tock, tick You know, you have that rhythm in percussion oh, yeah. going straight through the song. You know what I'm saying? Hmm, okay. You know? So I, until today, I still use up some of that tactics when I'm playing percussion on my oh, wow. own stuff. 